everybody, CW here. I just got a notification on my phone that my box, my PO box was just filled up. So I know what this stuff is. So I figured I would just do a boxing, unboxing with you guys. This here is chokes for my Charles Daly 101. Yes, sir. And they even come in a nice little box. And a key. That's pretty neat. The box is universal, I guess, but that's pretty neat. We'll have to try those out and make sure they work, but it should be an improved cylinder, modified in full, because the gun only came with super full, and I want to be able to shoot my buckshot and slugs through it. And that's not good through a super full choke. So there we go. Not much to speak of. <clears throat> if you look online for 410 chokes, and this takes the Benelli style, Beretta Benelli style. I couldn't find but one on Amazon and one used on eBay. And both of those were 50 and 60 bean sprouts. This was 40 bean sprouts for the set with the key and the box. Shipping was another 10 bucks, so it cost me 50 bean, bean sprouts. Still cheaper than a single used choke or a single new one, a little couple $20 more, from Amazon. So, pretty good deal for me. This one here is one I'm kind of excited about. I was talking with Jamie586, and he likes to tease me about scopes. I've been doing a, a run on scopes, and I deserve it. I have been going a little bit nuts. But I was given an offer on this one. And I don't know anything about it. Never had one. So I said, you know something? I'm going to grab it. And um, we'll see how it... We'll see how it looks here. It's uh, not... Wow, it's getting dull. Tip sharp. But that ain't none too sharp. We'll have to do a little sharpen on that. Anyway, what we got here is... A Sig Sauer Buckmaster scope. How the heck did they tape this up? 4 to 16 by 44 BDC. 30 millimeter. Where are all the particulars? Side focus. Second focal plane, MOA with a uh, you know, little BDC reticle. So a nice hunting scope. So I said, you know something? I could use a hunting style scope. I've been buying all these raised turret scopes. And although they're, you know, they're nice, they're not really great for hunting because the, those turrets can get bumped and get in the way and all that jazz. So a regular old capped turret hunting scope is a better deal for me for hunting. So I said, yeah, send this to me. I'll try it out. I'll tell you what I think. I never had a Sig Sauer scope before. I guess the story is that Buckmaster scopes used to be Nikons and, uh, when Nikon went out of business, Sig Sauer picked up the mantle, and it's a lower-end scope. It's not their premium, expensive, high-dollar scope, but it's supposed to be. Reviews that I saw said it was pretty good. All right, there's some instructions there. It looks like a, a cleaning cloth, a sticker. We don't care about that stuff. We just want to see this stuff. Now I like to keep everything in the bag. And there's your Sika gel. Keep that in the plastic bag so it don't soak up moisture. Put it back in the box. Now, this is supposed to have their, their flip-up cups that are, that are fancy-pantsy. And they go all the way over. So let's see. They do. Look at that. And they look at least as good as... At least as good as the ones I'm buying for from... Uh, Butler Creek. 
Well, the creek probably makes it for him, for all we know, right? Yeah. Good. There's 10, 12 bucks I don't need to buy. Hold I apologize. On. I had to sneeze. Okay. I like the looks of these turrets. Designed by Sig Sauer in Oregon. Assembled in China. Well, what can you do? Here's the parallax adjustment. It goes to infinity. And it starts at 20, I assume, yards. So maybe 18 yards. It's the lowest setting. It's okay. It's not going on an air gun. It's going to be fine. There's 50. 100, 200, 400, 500 space infinity. Okay. Again, capped turrets, which I like for a hunting scope. Oh, a nice big broad. See how this sounds. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Turns nicely. A little bit of slop. Doesn't really matter to me. I'm not going to be dialing this scope. We're going to sight it in. Cap it. And use the BDC. Leave it alone. Looks to be resettable. With an Allen wrench. I assume you just take that out. And lift it off and turn it. And put it back down like with all the other scopes. It's got a nice line to line up with your zero. Gives you re uh, regulation. And it's uh, quarter MOA clicks. Again, I told you 30 millimeter. So let's see how the glass looks. Comes with a stem installed and it looks like, yep, yeah, you can take it out. I didn't look in the instructions there to see if there's a shorter one or if there is a uh, plug screw or something if you take this out. Looks like it's got a little O-ring. I wish I get it out, but I can't get it to go back in. I hear a little Ellie dog behind me. There it goes. I'm on video, that's why. I'm um, sweeping off that side. That's good because your bolt is here on a bolt action. I don't like when they put them over here for low power because then you crash into them. My, uh, the one I just put on the, uh, the six arc, the true glow is right, was right here. But to, to their credit, they have about five spots all the way around where you can move it to. And I moved it dead center bottom. And my thinking was whenever you use it, you're going to sweep it up here. And you're not going to use three power a lot because it's it's more a target rifle than a hunting rifle. But if you did use it for hunting, because you could, swept it under there and it sticks right out the bottom and it clears. Everything is out of the way and it's out of the way. So you can easily get to it to sweep it up if you want to, but it's down there and out of the way. And uh, this, this moves nicely. Very nice. So let's have a look through it here and see what we have for optics. All right, it's a little bit of a tube. Um, a little bit um, looking through a tube, which again, it's not a super high dollar scope, so that's to be expected. But it's not, it's not awful. I've seen a lot worse. And being second focal plane, the reticle doesn't change. I just gave that a quick adjust. I generally pull these off. I find them a little bit annoying. And uh, the biggest reason I want covers is uh, in the in the gun safe. You know, they're sitting in there in the gun safe. Usually, muzzle up, and uh, dust can collect in your objective. But when you're out in the woods hunting them, generally speaking, you know you're going to have it close to your body, so you're going to be protecting this end of the scope with either your body or your, your head, you know, under your arm, whatever. But this end is out in the open. And if you're walking, you know, you can pick up, scoop up snow or whatever else without this being on there. That, that slap is no good. I'm going to have to put a little bit of moleskin somewhere. Hopefully I can get it on here. 
and stop it. I've done it under the scope, so hopefully it'll work out. And we're going to put this on the 7 mag. Remember the 7 mag? I had the uh, I had the Burris 4 to 12 on. And I took that off and I put on the Arkin for testing. But it just didn't didn't work out. It just to me, it just wasn't right. That right that barrel is is too light. That's that's a hunting rifle. That's a it's a lighter weight. 7 mag hunting rifle and it, and it doesn't need a heavy honking big scope on it it needs something like this it needs some good power because it is 7 mag it can reach out but uh this should be pretty good so let's uh let's get it put on stand by i'll get set up And there we go. I just threw a level on top to level that. I, I level it. I level this when I get at the range. Um, it's it's It'll be pretty close. But sometimes you get there on the range and it you don't like it or you need to change something. So I think I'm going to pull this off right now. Put it back in the box. Put the box up in the rafters where my other scope boxes go. And you will see this coming up soon. For the sight-in video and the load workup video. I'll get my sticker and put that on my cabinet. And let's see what else we got in here real quick. There's an Allen wrench, which is probably for the turret adjust. And lens cloth. And there's a plastic bag in there with nothing in it. I wonder what that's for. I don't know. It was a sealed package, so nobody's been in here. There's something go clink. Is that just the... Eh, it's just the uh, Allen wrench. We'll leave that right in there. and Let's take a quick perusal of the instructions, although it's a scope, so we know what's going on here. Let's put my peepers on so that I can see what you guys are seeing. Okay, introductions, features. Uh, so what do you want to know? Um, Haha. <laughs> It's already screwed up. Main tube one inch. <laughs> nope. It's toity millimeter. Looks like four inches of eye relief. If you can trust it, they got already one mistake with the diameter of the tube. Focus on the diopter, adjusting the power, resetting your zero. We talked about that. Loosen the two millimeter hex cap. Pull it off, rotate it, push it back on. I wonder if this jives with any kind of software they have. I mean the the little hash marks in here that would be that would be pretty neat if it did i think they've got ballistic software i don't see anything nothing here infinite lifetime guarantee nice all right nothing there to nothing there you probably don't already know if there is questions you have just put them in the comments and i'll answer as best i can i don't ever I don't often say it, but I do read all the comments and I do reply. If I don't know the answer, I will do my best to find it out for you. But usually as it pertains to what I'm talking about here, I have a good idea of what's going on and I'm able to answer your questions. But I certainly don't know it all and I'm the first to admit that. So if I don't, I will find it for you. All right, let's throw this on. I don't know if you guys have seen this. I'm not allowed to show you a lot of stuff in working, so you get to see a lot of the tools, but this is this is just a magnetic collimator, bore sighter, and basically all it does is it aligns, it lets you align your crosshairs to the center of your bore, if you can believe this is going to tell you that. It's been okay. I I can't say that it's ever made it perfect put me on the paper 100 percent. but in the same regard it's really nice when you're swapping scopes because you can put it on look at where your reticle is don't move or touch anything with that you know with the collimator remove your scope put the new scope on clamp it down bolt it then torque it up and then adjust your reticle in here to be at the same point that the other one was 
And that has consistently put me on the paper, if not really close to sighted in. So for that reason alone, if you're a scope swapper like me, it can be worthwhile. And it looks like we are pretty good. Yeah. Generally speaking, I'm one, one and a quarter high and one, one and a quarter to the left of center. And that's exactly where this comes right out of the box. So I'm going to leave it alone. I'm not going to touch it. We're going to call that bore sighted, bench sighted, bench sighted. What I do when I get to the range, you've seen me many times, I remove the bolt out of the gun. I look right down the barrel at 100 yards, at a target, at a rock, at a corner, at anything that, that is stationary. Don't move the gun. Leave the bore like a peep sight and then move your crosshairs to that general vicinity without moving the gun. Look back through here and check back through the bore. Look at your scope, look through the bore, and adjust the turrets until it's close to the same point of impact as, your, as what you view through the center of the bore. And that'll put you on the paper um, pretty much 100% for sure. It won't sight you in, but it'll put you on the paper and save your ammo. All right, there we go, folks. Tell me what you think. I think it's good looking. I think it's a good looking, uh, good looking scope. I like that matte finish. I like the big caps, the tubes, rugged looks. I like it. I think it's a winner. And I will report how it works out. In case you don't know, these are Tally lightweight rings. I've shown you in a few videos. I've been picking these up lately with a couple of rifles that have changed, uh, changed optics. And uh, I really do like them. They're they're really solid and they're very light. They're very light. And the, the price on them is quite economical. I'm not sponsored by them in any way. So that, you know, my own money buying them and putting them on. Um, I got a buddy who's been telling me about them for years. And I kind of, I've been listening, but I haven't been buying them. But uh, I, I, did, I did buy them a while back and uh, I really like them. So I give him uh, credit for finding them out before. I did. That's Denny. He'll be, uh, he doesn't watch many of my videos. He does subscribe, but he has a very short attention span, if you know what I mean. So he can't make it through. He'll certainly never make it through. What are we on here? Six minutes? He'll certainly never make it that far. Three or four is like his maximum. So, all right, everyone. So look forward to seeing this on the range in upcoming videos. I really like these, uh, Mauser actions, and I really like these rifles. This is the third one. Fourth one. Third one. Third one of these I've had. Um, one was a 2506 that my brother has now. One is another 7 mag that another buddy has. And I liked it so much, I bought another one when it came around. I was going to convert it into something else. I was going to make a 358 Nora mag out of it. But after I bought this gun, it was a month or so, and a three uh, four a three fifty eight came up on twenty four hour campfire, and I started talking to the guy, and we struck a deal, and I bought the gun. So this one stayed seven mag. Ironically, that one that I bought was a Winchester Model seventy, originally a seven mag. So that's pretty funny. All right, everybody. God bless. Everyone has a great day. CW out.